All right, good day everyone. So welcome to this subject, the contemporary world. Again, I'm Ms. Novi Dibalikot, your instructor in this subject. So we are now in our lesson 13, but before that, let me have a recap with our previous lesson, which is all about the global demography. So last time we were able to understand what is demography demography which is a quantitative study of human population um, including the mortality rate the fertility rate and aging so we were able to understand the relationship between population and the economic uh, welfare and also the effects of aging and overpopulation and also the different um, positions on the idea of um, reproductive health loss in different countries. So this time we will be talking about the global migration, which is again, we will be talking about people, but this time people who are moving you know, across uh, borders. So, but before that, uh, remember that in this lesson, you are expected to identi identify uh, the reasons why people migrate. No? And then analyze the political, economic, cultural, and social factors underlying the glo global movements of these people. Right? So, let us start with understanding what is migration. So, what is migration? So, migration you know, is, or specifically, we will be talking about the human migration. So, it involves the movement of people from one place to another with intention of settling permanently or temporarily at a new location. So, in this lesson, we will take a look at global migration and its impact on both the sending and the receiving countries. So although we will cite numerous challenges relating to migration, migration should not be considered as a problem. So there is nothing moral or immoral about moving from one country to another. So human beings are always um, or have always been migratory. So it is a result of their movement that some of the areas get populated and communities experience diversity and at the same time, the economy prosper. So that's rather than looking at the migration in terms of simplistic good versus bad lens, treat it as a complex social phenomenon that even predates contemporary globalization. So... What is a uh, migration? So again, it is um, human migration, the movement of people. No? So it has uh, two types. So it's internal migration and international migration. And for international migration, it can be further broken down into five, which is um, the immigrants, the temporary immigrants, the illegal migrants, the petition, and the refugees. So when we say internal migration, um, this refers to people moving from one area to another but within one country only. And, or within the country. And international migration, on the other hand, is moving from one area to another uh, to another or people cross border of one country to another so international migration includes immigrants so those are people who move um, permanently to other country Next is temporary. So these temporary migrants refers to workers who stay in another country for a fixed 
period. So, contractual. So, for example, six months in a year. So, these are for OFWs working um, abroad. The next one is illegal migrants. So, illegal migrants comprises the third group which refers to the migration of people into a country in violation of the immigration laws of that country. So, or continued residence in that country without the legal right to live in that country. So, while well, the fourth are migrants whose families have petitioned them to move to destination country. So, for example, if you would like to become a citizen, no, um, if you would like to become a citizen or a permanent resident of United States and obtain your green card, so an immigrant petition needs to be filed on your behalf by either of your relative or your employer or in some cases by yourself so two types of immigrants visa petitions are family-based or employment-based petitions so the last group are what we call refugees so they are also known as cost asylum seekers so example they are those who are unable or unwilling to return because of a well-founded fear of persecution from their country on account of race, religion, nationality, membership in a particular social group, or by political opinion. So before we will take a look at the impact of this migration, um, let us have or let us look at first uh, the report on the study on the number of migrants across the world. So according to the World Migration and, and a report of IOM, United Nations Migration, that the current global estimate that there were around 281 million migrants or what we call international migrants across the world in 2020. So that is 3.60% of the global population. So overall, the estimated number of international migrants has increased over the five decades. So the total estimated is 281 million people living in a country other than their own country of birth. So, in 2020, 128 million more than, we, that is 128 million more than in 1990 and over three times is the estimated number in the year 1970. Right. So, now let us take a look at the number the report on the number of international migrants which has increased in all UN regions but has uh, increased to a greater degree in Europe and Asia than in other regions of the world. So we have here the Oceania, Latin America and Caribbean, Africa, North America, Asia and the Europe. So Europe, okay. This area, Europe and Asia, hosted around 87 and 86 million international migrants, respectively, comprising 61% of the global international migrant stock. So, this region were followed by um, North America with almost 59 million international migrants and 21% um, of the global migrant stock, Africa at 9%, and then Oceania at 3%. So when compared with the size of the population in each, uh, in each region, shares of international migrants in 2020 were highest in Oceania, 
North America and Europe, where international migrants represented respectively 22%, 16%, and 12% of the total population. In comparison, the share of international migrants is relatively small in Asia and Africa at 1.8% and 1.9%, respectively, and Latin America and the Caribbean in two point, with 2.3%. However, Asia uh, in 2020 has experienced the most remarkable growth from this uh, from 2000 to 2020 at 74 percent. That was around 37 million people in absolute terms. So Europe experienced the second largest growth during this period with an increase of 30 million international migrants followed by an increase of 18 million international migrants in North America and 10 million in Africa. The next uh, report is uh, about the total number of international within each um, country. All right. So the proportion of international migrants varies significantly around the world. So the great majority of people do not migrate across borders. Much larger numbers migrate within countries. So there is an estimated 740 million internal migrants you know, in 2009, 2009. And that said, the increase in international migrants has been evident over time, both numerically and proportionally and at a slightly faster rate than previously anticipated although there are only a small proportion of the world's population over overall who are international migrants with 3.6 percent there exists wide variation at the country level so in some countries such as the united states uh, such as the uh, united arab emirates i mean over 88 um here over 88 percent of the population are international migrants right the next report is um all right as uh the most um pri uh, originating countries or descending countries uh, sending of immigrant countries so more than 40 percent of all international migrants worldwide in 2020 or that is 115 million were born in asian asian countries um, which is or including india which is the largest country of origin of the migrants so, followed by China, Bangladesh, um, Pakistan, Afghanistan, uh, Pakistan, Afghanistan, and then our country, Philippines, of course. We are one of the topmost sending immigrants in the world. And then the second largest country of origin is Mexico. So several other European countries are also um, has sizable population of immigrants, including Ukraine, uh, Poland, UK, Romania, and also Germany. All right. The next uh, one is the receiving country. What is the topmost receiving countries or country? So. Of course, it is the United States of okay, the United States of America. So it has been the main country of destination for international migrants since 1970. So since then, the number of foreign-born people residing in the country has more than quadrupled from less than 12 million in 1970 to 51 million in 2019 and then germany this is is the second top destination for the migrants 
which has also observed an increase over the years from 8.9 million in 2000 to nearly 16 million in 2020. So now, um, we have seen no, how this, um, how people uh, move from one place to another. So mostly, people move across borders or go to other places uh, because of um, economic opportunities or primarily economic opportunities or work so now what are the benefits and the detriments or the problems of for the sending countries so what will happen or what usually happen to the countries where this um, group of people you know, um, come are coming from right all right so one of the benefits um is um available data reflect that there is an overall increase in remittances in the recent decades from 126 billion in 2000 a billion dollars in 2000 to 717 billion dollars in 2019 so these are what are these remittances so these remittances are financial or in-kind transfers made by migrants directly to their families or communities in their countries of origin high income countries are almost always the main source of remittances so for example the united states has consistently been the top remittance sending country so with a total outflow of 71.6 billion in 2019 followed by the united arab emirates or the uae that was a 45 billion dollars and the saudi arabia 31.2 billion dollars then switzerland 28.2 billion dollars billion dollars and then germany that was 24.1 billion dollars so again you uae saudi arabia switzerland and germany are top no are the top remittance sending countries so meaning to say these are the countries with high mga immigrants or so immigrant workers and in 2019 here in our data um india china mexico and philippines of course our country and france were the top five remittance recipients so we are the recipient countries and although india and china were all above the rest with the total inward remitt remittances exceeding 67 billion um dollars for each country right so another and uh, more importantly uh, this process has um, often has, uh, has been uh, referred to as the movement of these people you know, from one place to another especially for our professional workers has been referred to as a brain drain so according to Mackenzie Global Institute, countries in sub-Saharan Africa and Asia have lost one third of their college graduates. 60% of those who moved to um, or OECD countries or these member countries of OECD were college graduate compared to 9% of the overpopulation in that country and then 52 percent of filipinas have lived for work in the developed world have tertiary education which is more than double the 23 percent of the overall filipino population so another is you know the loss the problem that uh, the loss of these professionals no? 
in 2006, some 15% of the locally doc, uh, trained doctors, for example, in sub-Saharan African countries, now like Liberia, Ghana, Uganda, has um, had immigrated to United States or Canada. So governments are aware of this long-term handicap but have no choice but to continue promoting migrant work as part of the state policy because of the remittance and the impact on the gross domestic, domestic product of the country. So concerned with the workforce and in getting the maximum remittances, governments no, further are actively involved in the recruitment and deployment of these workers. Some of them even set uh, departments like Bureau of Manpower, Employment in Bangladesh, the Office of the Protector of the Indian Labor Ministry. And in the Philippines, we have the POEA. No? So governments we are actively also involved in sending migrant workers to get the maximum remittances. And also, another detriment of this migration is uh, the problem on human trafficking. So on the top issue of the brain drain sending states might likewise, of course, protect the migrant workers so the united states federal bureau of investigation lists human trafficking as the third largest criminal activity worldwide so in 2012 the international labor organization or the elo identified 21 million men women and children as victims of forced labor which is an Filing uh, three, uh, three out of every 1,000 uh, persons worldwide. And 90% of these victims or 18.7 million victims are exploited by private enterprises and entrepreneurs. And 22% or 4.5 million are sexually abused. And 68% or that is 14.2 million workers work under compulsion in agricultural manufacturing infrastructure and domestic activities so human trafficking has been very profitable and in these uh, earning syndicates smugglers and corrupt state official profits as high as 150 billion dollars in a year so in 2014 governments private sectors and civil society groups have worked together not to combat human trafficking yet the result until now is still uneven no so another another problem or another challenge to migration or global migration is an issue on the really a final issue which relates to how these migrants interact with their new home countries so they may be contribute um, significantly to the to a host nation's gross domestic product but their access to housing healthcare, and education in that country is not easy so there is of course um consider considerable variation in the economic integration of migrants so for example migrants from china india and western europe often have more success However, most from those in Middle East, um, North Africa, Sub-Saharan Africa face a greater challenges in securing jobs. So in the United States and in Singapore, there are blue collar as well as white collar Filipino workers like doctors, engineers, or even corporate executives. And it is the professional or the white collar workers that have oftentimes been easier to integrate no all right so the next one is uh, another challenge to global migration is um democratic states 
assimilate immigrants and their children um, by granting them citizenship and rights that go with it, especially public education. However, without a solid support from their citizens, switching citizenship may just be a formality. Linguistic difficulties, cost, um, customs from the old country and of late differing a religion may create cleavages between migrants and citizens of the receiving countries, particularly, particularly in the Western countries. The latter... Western countries might also accuse these migrants of bringing in the culture from their home, home countries and um, amplifying differences in linguistic and um, ethnic customs. Crucial, crucially, the lack of integration gives the groups more ammunition, ammunition to argue that these new citizens are often not uh, nationals in the sense of sharing the dominant culture. Um, the next one is uh, to solve these uh, problems or these challenges of global migration, governments and private businesses have made policy changes to address this uh, integration problem. So government and, um, pr and private businesses had made policies like using multiple languages in state documents like in the case of United States. Uh, the use of the, the Spanish and the English. And training programs also complemented with counseling ha have also helped migrant integration in Hamburg, Germany, while ret retail merchants in Barcelona have brought in migrant shopkeepers to break down language barriers while introducing Chinese culture to citizens. So whether this initiative will succeed or not, it remains as an open question so indeed um global migration no entails um the globalization of people and like the the broader globalization process it is uneven so some migrants experience their movement as a liberating process a highly educated professional for example may find moving to another country financially rewarding at the other end it they might be a victim of sex trafficking which may view the process of migration as a dislocating and disempowering so like globalization moreover migration produces different and often contradictory responses on the other hand many richer states know that migrant labor will be beneficial for their economies so with their aging population, for example, Japan and Germany will need workers from the demographically young countries like our country, Philippines. And similarly, as a working population in countries like the United States <clears throat> move to more skilled careers, their economy, economy will require migrants to work on jobs that their local workers are beginning to reject. And yet, despite these benefits, developed countries continue to excessively limit and restrict migrant labor they do so for the numerous factors already mentioned a while ago so some want to preserve uh, what they perceive as local culture by shielding shielding it from the newcomers so other states also use these migrants as scapegoats blaming them from economic woes that are in reality caused by government policy and not by foreigners Yet, despite this various contradiction, is it um, is clear that different forms of global interdependence will ensure that global migration will continue to be one of the major issues in the contemporary world. So, countries whose economies have become entirely dependent on globalization and rely on foreign labor to continue growing, example, the Singapore and Saudi Arabia, and even Japan will actively court foreign uh, foreign workers and likewise countries like Philippines with an abundance of labor and need for remittances we will continue to send our workers abroad so hence it is inevitable that countries will have to open up again prevent their economies from stagnating or even collapse 
uh, when uh, response to these movements like xenophobia and extreme um, uh, nationalism in the receiving countries, dependency in the sending countries will continue to be the pressing issue. So that would be all for this lesson, but I would like to um, give you a short description on our next lesson. Um, still, uh, we will be talking about, uh, we will be uh, learning about um, the environmental sustainability or the environmental crisis and the sustainable developments in that <laughs>